Live from Case at 12, the night beat starts right now. It is a death that's raising a lot of questions. Was this man killed? His family believes he was, but San Antonio police have not yet made a determination. Family members identify him as Jesus Solis. He was found shot in the head in his pickup truck yesterday. He later died at the hospital. The night team's Jaffney Gray with how his family is remembering him. He was an honest man, a good man. Family members of Jesus Solis, or Jesse, are still in shock after learning the 47-year-old was found with a gunshot wound inside his parked pickup. He was parked at the back of a construction site where he worked near Eisenhower on the northeast side. It just seemed grim, to be honest. His loved ones say the details surrounding Solis' death were unexpected. I just got the call saying that something happened to my uncle and that he was being rushed in an ambulance. I almost wrecked. <laughs> Thinking that something had happened to my, my brother, you know, construction work wise. Solis would have turned 48 this Thursday. I've put that far from my mind because I know that the emotions that will come up if I even start thinking about that. They say Solis was a hardworking man who loved his job and was always early for work. He had a routine to get there to work early because he wanted to beat traffic. They described him as a creature of habit with a larger than life personality. Very old fashioned, did not believe in social media had a flip phone. He was loud, very loud. I know I would be asleep <laughs> at the house and if I heard that voice, it's gonna wake me up. Most of all, they say his heart was made of gold. He was a very kind, sweet person, very giving. Irreplaceable, irreplaceable. San Antonio police say they're waiting for the medical examiner's ruling on whether Solis' death was a homicide or suicide. However, his family is certain that somebody is responsible. Us as a, fam as a family, would love to have that closure to see that person, to face that person and ask them why. Now again, San Antonio police are asking anyone with any information that can help in this case to call their homicide unit. That number is 210-207-7635. Jaffney Gray, Case at 12 News. Thank you, Jaffney. A murder suicide involving workplace violence on the east side. Tonight, the medical examiner identifying both men who died in the case. Police also confirming that 56 year old Baldemar Martinez Thomas is the accused gunman in the case and 47 year old Jamie Martinez is the victim. According to a police report, both relatives worked at JTM transport on I-10 and Foster Road on the northeast side. Police say Martinez shot just after 11 this morning. The suspect later found at a family dollar about five miles away with a self-inflicted gunshot wound. A kitchen fire leads to evacuations at a northwest side strip mall. The fire happened at Crown Point Center off Culebra Road. The San Antonio Fire Department says someone living in the apartments behind the strip mall first saw the smoke coming from the building. That person called 911 and when crews arrived on scene, smoke could be seen billowing out of the roof. Everyone at the shopping center was evacuated. Fortunately, no one was injured. Firefighters plan to return to the property tomorrow to determine what started the fire in the kitchen. Unfortunately, people around them start to see that they are forgetting things, that grandma will sign her check and forget 20 minutes later, and they take advantage of that. And it's, it's, it's horrible. Unthinkable financial crimes against seniors. It's happening. Criminals have been getting away with it for years. Bear County Judge Veronica Vasquez, who you just heard from, says a newly formed task force will aim to make sure those involved are prosecuted. The 19th's Patty Santos tells us they are trying to close cracks in a system at every level. If you hear the things that I hear in my courtroom, you can't help what, but want to do something about it. So it's incredibly frustrating when you feel like on the other end nothing is happening. Bear County probate judge Veronica Vasquez is making it her mission to change the current status quo. Almost daily she rolls on cases involving people over 65 years old who are being financially exploited but no one seems to be sure what happens to the suspects. What I was seeing a lot of times in this courtroom is that those perpetrators were being validated on but they weren't being prosecuted. 
Last year, 130 exploitation abuse cases were investigated and confirmed by Adult Protective Services, or APS. APS doesn't prosecute cases, it only investigates them and refers them to law enforcement. Vavasquez and State Senator Jose Menendez found that it's hard to track how many, if any, are being criminally prosecuted. Well, it's disappointing, shocking and disappointing, uh, that they're not prosecuted, uh, whether it be a lack of resources, whether it be a lack of evidence. Last fall, Vasquez had along with State Senator Jose Menendez, launched the Elder Abuse and Exploitation Task Force. The whole point of this task force is to say everyone that has a stake in this game needs to take responsibility because we need to do something. They discovered that somewhere between APS, law enforcement, and the district attorney's office, the cases were falling through the cracks. So now, once a month, a representative from those agencies, along with banks and the attorney general's office, meet up to set up a line of communication and track these financial crimes against seniors. I think that we need to send a strong message that says, you are, no one should prey on our senior citizens, and if you do, you're gonna be prosecuted. And one of their missions is to educate the public about where to call if they suspect financial crimes against a senior. They want to erase the stigma in the community that nothing will be done about it. The 24-hour hotline to report a crime to Adult Protective Services is 800-252-5400. Thank you, Patty. He's been on the run for almost two years, and tonight authorities need your help tracking him down. James Brandyberg is wanted for not telling law enforcement where he lives. He's required to register as a sex offender for the rest of his life after he was convicted of sexual assault in 2007. The Lone Star Fugitive Task Force has been searching for Brandyberg since May 2018. If you know anything that can lead to his arrest, call the Lone Star Fugitive Task Force at 210-657-8500. Six students forcing one school to close temporarily. The cases led to low attendance at Ingram Elementary School. The school sits northwest of San Antonio, not all that far from Kerrville. School staff says Ingram Elementary closed its doors today and will remain closed tomorrow as crews go through the facilities to clean thoroughly. We asked if the flu was to blame, but the school only described this being in response to incidents of illness. They wouldn't specify which one. The students are set to return to Ingram Elementary on Thursday. We're told students won't have to make up the two days that they missed. One San Antonio school district changing course, Northeast ISD is dropping class rankings for all students who are not within the top 10% of their class. It's the first district in San Antonio to make the move, and it's a plan that's been in the works since 2018. Donna Newman with NEISD says this will help alleviate stress that students feel about their class rank. She says district officials met with school administrators, counselors, parents, and universities. Usually the top 10% are automatically admitted at most state-funded universities in Texas. NEISD says they found during the admission process that some universities are actually looking at the child's entire academic experience, not just their class rank. Newman says this process is starting with the district's 7th graders who are just now choosing their 8th grade courses. New developments after the loss of a Floresville councilman. We have now learned his daughter was appointed to fill his seat. Jared, Ed, Jared Jimenez was killed last week in a two-vehicle accident in Wilson County. Now his daughter, Jade Jimenez, will serve in the place for seat. Another councilwoman, Marisa Jimenez, who is of no relation, released pictures of Jade's swearing in ceremony. She also said the appointment was made after a unanimous vote on her Facebook page. She went on to say, quote, as titles are meant to be passed down, records meant to be broken. I am no longer the youngest Hispanic female. I've passed that title to Miss Jade. And let me tell you, I am so proud to do so, end quote. We've got a night beat update now on those Taco Cabana closures here in town. The parent company for the taco chain now amending information they gave us last night. They now say only one location closing in San Antonio. The other closure is in New Braunfels. The location on Highway 90 actually remains open, but the location on Blanco Road and West Avenue remains closed. Taco Cabana's parent company, the Fiesta Restaurant Group, is now reporting the New Braunfels location on State Highway 46 is closed. This in addition to the more than a dozen other locations closed throughout the state. 
because of what the company calls significant loss in revenue. The Fiesta Restaurant Group, also the parent company for the Pollo Tropical restaurants. Back in 2017, you may remember that the company closed more than two dozens of those locations, including those here in San Antonio. At the time, the company blamed the effects of Hurricane Harvey for the limited awareness of that brand. Good evening. Patchy dense fog is beginning to develop across portions of South Texas here in San Antonio. Visibility is still OK. We're at eight miles, but up in the hill country, Kerrville, you're down to one quarter of a mile visibility right now. So the fog will continue to settle in through the overnight hours and as everyone is getting out the door tomorrow morning. So yes, another kind of messy morning commute, overcast fog, mist drizzle, 10% chance that there will be some rain, a little bit heavier than drizzle out there tomorrow morning and temperatures are not going to be much cooler than they are right now. We're looking at a low overnight San Antonio right around 66 degrees and we're at 67 right now. We'll take a look at what the rest of your Wednesday has in store and when we could see rain chances ramp up just a little bit coming up in a few minutes.